Hello, everybody. So my name is Adrian Bauer, and I am the Wildlife Director here at Wildlife Prairie Park in Hannah City, Illinois. I'm very excited you could join us today. Um, if you've been a part of any of our other videos, we typically have a lot of animals available on those videos. Today, it's going to be a lot more of me talking and us looking at some slides and some pictures. But if you stay with me and we read through all of this information together, I promise there's a really fun, cute video in here that's a cartoon that goes on, on to explain a little bit more about science. And then together, we're going to do an experiment in the second half of our video, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So I am going to minimize myself here. And we are going to take a look at our slides. So the name of our program today is Super Scientist. So what is science and who are scientists? So science is a way of organizing what we already know and learning more by experiments. And scientists use the scientific method to learn about the world. So the scientific method is something we're going to talk about a little bit later and go a little bit more in depth in. So what kind of scientists are there? There are a lot of different branches of science and I have collected just a few of the common sciences here to kind of go over with everybody. So there is biology, which is the study of living things. There's a lot of different things you can do with biology. Um, here we have somebody who is a field biologist. And so they are outside studying the environment, the plants, maybe even the animals and everything working together. You could be a botanist or botany, which is the study of plants. You could be a chemist or the study of the elements like carbon and other compounds like carbon dioxide. You could be um, a geologist. Uh, so the study of geology is studying rocks and the earth. Astronomy, which is the study of stars, planets, moons, and everything in space. There's meteorology, which is the study of the weather. Anthropology, which is the study of humans. And so we have these people here who are um, learning different things from people in another community and learning about their cultures. And there's zoology, which is the study of animals. And so here at Wildlife Prairie Park, our animal keepers are a scientist of zoology and biology. And this is a picture of myself and my daughter. Um, this is when we first found out that our river otters had their babies. So right here is baby Winnie. If you've had a chance to come see her at the park, that's when she was just about two months old. So science is all about getting to answers of questions. Scientists are curious. They want to know the answers. Then they want to share what they learn. So we are asking questions like why, when, where, what, and who. So what kind of scientist do you want to be when you grow up? So think about what interests you. Is it volcanoes? Then maybe you'd like to be a volcanologist or a special kind of geologist. There's more than a whole world of science. Um, you might even want to study things that are beyond our Earth and be an astronomer, studying the stars and moons and different planets. So dream big. Uh, science is really important. Here at Wildlife Prairie Park, we definitely like to encourage everybody to, um, if you're interested in the scientists, sciences, to go in them or be a big part of them. This here is a link to a video if you have time to watch it. It's about six minutes um, and it's a video that's basically about when you grow up and keeping track of your childhood dreams and it's all about how some of these sciences came together. It is a little cartoon, so it's kind of fun. Um, they go over about all different scientists and what they discovered and how 
we have learned what we have today through all the different science experiments that have happened over hundreds of years. So how can you be a scientist right now? Well, we can do something called citizen science. And that is when there are scientific experiments and data collection that are happening. Um, and the scientists themselves maybe don't have time to go out and collect all that data. And so what they do is they reach out to the community, to schools, to students, and they ask them to help collect the data. And sometimes the, even the best technology isn't as powerful as a lot of people working together to help collect the data. I have even had some um, scientists tell me that kids make a better scientist than some adults because you're curious and you're always asking questions. And a lot of times kids are really good at following directions to the letter when they're doing an experiment. Um, and that can be very helpful. So I have a little example here and feel free to print this out and use it or go on NASA's website and check out their school cloud identification project. But this is a chart and it shows you pictures of the different types of clouds that there would be outside. And what you're doing is you're going outside, you're using this chart to identify which clouds there might be for the day. And then you go on to the NASA database and you enter your information. This is helping them collect information about the cloud cover and the weather that might be happening in different areas. There's also another type of citizen science and many of you may have heard of it. It's called the Great Backyard Bird Count with the Audubon Society. The Audubon Society studies birds, all kinds of birds all over the world. And so what they ask everybody to do is to just put up your bird feeder, go outside, maybe get an identification book or use the internet um, or have an adult help you decide what types of birds are out in your yard. And all you're doing is counting them. So if you see a robin outside, and you mark that you've seen one robin and then another robin comes to your bird feeder, you can mark that you've seen two robins and then a cardinal comes and you mark that you've seen a cardinal and you watch all day um, or just for a little bit and you mark all the different birds that you saw during the time you were observing. And then you go on to their website and you enter that data. And that is helping them collect what birds are in the area and maybe about how many of those birds are in the area. So doing these citizen science projects really helps the scientists collect their data and continue their research. And it allows everybody to be kind of a part of the experiment and part of the fun and the data collection. So we're gonna do an experiment here in a little bit. But first we need to go over the scientific method. Now, remember we talked about this is what scientists go through when they're doing an experiment and they have a question. So the scientific method is defined as a method of research in which a problem is identified, relevant data is gathered, a hypothesis is formulated from this data, and the hypothesis is empirically tested. What in the world does that mean? In kids' terms, the scientific method is a way for scientists to study and learn things. It doesn't matter what the scientist is trying to learn, using the scientific method can help them come up with the answers. So we need to use these steps here to come up with the answers to our question for our experiment. So the first thing that we're gonna do is ask a question, and then we're gonna make observations. So the topic of your research and experimentation or the question that needs answered. Then we're gonna do our research. We're gonna find out about the topic. We're gonna to look up what it is and gather some information about it that way. We're going to make a hypothesis. That's a big word. That word means that we are going to predict the outcome. So we're going to kind of take a guess about what we think is gonna happen during the experiment before we actually do the experiment. Then we're gonna do our experiment um, and we're gonna develop a, pr a procedure to our test. So there's gonna be steps to our experiment 
and we're going to make sure we keep those in order and we follow those so that we can do our experiment more than one time and hopefully get the same results. Then we're going to collect our data that's recording what we find during our experiment. We're going to analyze our data so we are going to examine it and take a look at it and try and understand it and then we're going to come up with our conclusion which is comparing the hypothesis to the results that we got from our experiment all right so before you watch the second part of this video we're going to need to gather some things we are going to do an experiment called a milk painting so in order to do the milk painting, you're going to need a bowl or a plate, milk, and it doesn't matter what kind of milk, you can use almond milk, you can use goat's milk, you can use regular milk, 2%, whole milk, skim milk, whatever type of milk you have. Um, doesn't need to be a lot, we just need to cover the bottom of the bowl and the plate. We will need food coloring, Q-tips, dish soap, and then if you have some other items you want to have ready um, that might be helpful during this experiment, I would get some plain white paper, a notebook, and some crayons or markers, um, and cotton balls. Now the paper, notebook, crayons, and cotton balls, you don't have to have them. Those are just an option, um, and we'll go over those in our experiment. So I have done a lot of talking today as we've gone through this PowerPoint and we've talked about science. Um, so we are going to take a look at some video of some of our animals too, because I know that everybody loves the animals and they're a lot of fun. So we're gonna take our little break while everybody's gathering their items for our experiment and we'll watch some of our animals while we're doing that. All right, so I am going to stop myself in this video and we're going to switch over to our animals here. All right, so as I promised, um, I did a lot of talking and we did a PowerPoint for our last section and I promised I would show you guys one of our animals. So we are going to take a look at Tank, our striped skunk, and I'm wearing a mask because we want to make sure that our animals stay just as safe as we do when we're here working with them. All right, so let's take a look at Tank and watch him get his breakfast. Good morning, Tank. Would you like your breakfast? I'm put that right there for you. So this is Tank, and he is a seven-year-old striped skunk. His favorite part of the day is definitely when he gets his meals. He likes his kibble, so that's what he's eating first, if you hear all that crunching. He's got some berries in his dish too, and that's what we're going to hope he eats this morning. That's the most important thing in his diet because it has his medicine in there. We have to hide his little pills in a berry in order to get him to eat it. Um, when we put it in the berry, he doesn't know it's there. If you guys notice, he has some really long nails for digging. He has that nice striping down his back like skunks have. And while he's eating his kibble, you can kind of see his nice sharp teeth he's got in there so that he can chew all his food. Oh, he's eating the berry. So now we know he got his medicine too. All right, Tank, we'll let you finish eating your breakfast. Bye. All right, everybody, welcome back. We are going to start our experiment part of this um, video. And so just to go back over what we will need for this experiment. You need a bowl or a plate. We are going to use a plate today. You need food coloring. We've got a nice variety of food coloring. We need dish soap, and that's what's in this little bowl here. 
we need milk um, and you can use whatever type of milk you want um, I am going to use a lactose free milk today and we also need q-tips and then if you want to try and keep a part of the art that you make today we're also going to want some blank sheets of paper for us to keep um, what our milk art looks like so before we start our experiment, once we have all of our things gathered, um, we need to talk about our scientific method. So today, the first thing that we need to do is ask our question. And our question today is going to be, how does food coloring react in milk? And why does the color um, make what looks like a burst when we have it interact with the dish soap. Then we're going to observe what is happening um, in this experiment. And if you have your little notebook, you can draw pictures of what this looks like and you can uh, write down little notes about what it is that you're seeing with this experiment. The next step we're going to do is our research. So I have done the research here. I've looked up how we're going to do this experiment and I've looked up why these things react the way they do. And we're gonna cover that at the end of our experiment. Our third thing we're going to have to do is our hypothesis. So remember, that is us predicting the outcome of our problem. So we need to hypothesize or predict what we think is going to happen when we put the food coloring in the milk and we mix it with the dish soap. So you can discuss with whoever you're doing this experiment with what you think the hypothesis is going to be. Um, I think that it is going to make something like a tie dye kind of experiment, uh, kind of reaction when we do this. All right, and so now we are going to move on to the next portion of our scientific method, which is step number four, and that is our experiment. So the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to pour our milk into our bowl or onto our plate. And you really do not need a whole lot of milk. Um, you just want to have a nice thin layer within your bowl or your plate or your baking dish, whatever it is that you're using. The next step is that we are going to put some drops of food coloring um, onto the milk. And so you want to probably have about two drops of each uh, food coloring. You can do more than that. Um, my bowl here, or my plate, sorry, is just a little bit smaller. And so I think two drops is plenty. But if you're using something like a big baking sheet, then you may want to do something more like four drops of each color really up to you. The neat thing about this experiment is it allows you to kind of try different things and maybe not follow um, every single step exactly. If you make a mistake, it should be okay. All right, so now we've got our drops of food coloring. So next we're going to take our Q-tip and we are going to dip it into our dish soap and we want a generous amount so that looks like a pretty good amount there. Now what we're going to do next is we are going to set our q-tip next to one of our color dots and see what happens. It's a fairly quick reaction so everybody ready? So it does what they call a color burst and once the dish soap is in there it only bursts once but now we're going to watch and see what happens with these colors as i take this q-tip and i kind of move it through so i am observing that we are getting all of these cool little color bursts here and there's one forming here and it looks like little rivers of all of our colors here as they're starting to swirl together. So 
So you can choose to mix these however much you want. It only makes one burst once the dish soap goes into our experiment. It stops making the burst. But all the colors are still gonna swirl together here and make this really neat pattern. So it's, as you can see, it's starting to swirl around and make this kind of a tie-dye pattern. So you can keep mixing as much as you want. I'm gonna stop there and I'm gonna try this sheet of paper and see what this looks like. So I'm gonna set that down. And lift it up. That's pretty neat. And we can set that off to the side to dry. Let's try one more. We're gonna get all those colors there. Ooh, that one's fun too. All right, so we're gonna set those off to the side to dry. So we did this experiment once. I am going to clean this up and rinse it out and we're gonna do the experiment again and when we're doing the experiment the next time, I'm going to go over about why this reaction is happening, happening the way it is. So what we've done right now is collected our data with our observation by watching what happened, swirling our colors together, taking some samples and making our art. And then we're going to analyze it here next. And we're going to come up with our conclusion about what happened in our science experiment. Okay, so I cleaned everything up um, and we have new milk in here and we're ready to do our experiment again. We are going to start by talking about our scientific method. So the first thing we need to do is ask our question. We've already done this experiment once so that everybody could see how it worked, but we're gonna pretend we don't know what's about to happen. So our question today is going to be, how is the milk going to react to the food coloring and the dish soap that we're using? We're gonna talk a little bit about the research um, that I have done on this and what this all means and how it's all reacting. We're gonna talk about our hypothesis. So we need to predict the outcome of our question. So I, I mean, I, we already know what's going to happen, but again, we're gonna pretend we don't. So I think when we mix the food coloring and the dish soap, it's just going to make, um, kind of a tie dye or it might actually just make the milk turn brown because all the colors are going to be mixed in there together. And now we're going to develop our procedure. So we're going to go over the steps of what we do again and that are the, those are the steps of our experiment so that we can do this multiple times. So first thing we're going to do again, we've got our milk in our bowl. Now we are going to add our couple of drops of food coloring here. All right, and here comes our dish soap. Hopefully we get a better burst of color this time. Let's go buy this red one. All right, so we had our color burst. All of our colors are starting to swirl and mix together again. So if you have your notebook and your markers, this is where you want to start to collect and record your data. So you can just simply draw a picture of what you are seeing here. And that would be totally fine as far as collecting your data. You can also use that sheet of paper to keep a copy of what this art looks like. And that's a form of collecting your data as well. 
Now for our analysis and our conclusion of this, I'm going to talk to you about how this is all working and why it's important. So the molecules in the dish soap are attracted to the fat molecules in the milk. As soon as you introduce the soap to the milk, the color mixture, um, the molecules are going to race around trying to bond. The food coloring gets pushed around in the process. And that's how we see all these lovely little swirls and kind of rivers of color. And they appear to burst when they first get introduced to each other. Now eventually the molecules have all bonded and then the reaction stops. So we only get to see that color burst once because the reaction has stopped. But this is a really good example of how detergents work. Um, their molecules have two ends. One end is attracted to water and the other to oils. So one end of the molecule attracts the dirt and the oils from clothes or dishes, and they stick together, and then they break down the dirt and the oils into smaller, easier to remove pieces. And that's really important, and this is a good, fun way to kind of learn about that and experiment with that. Right now we're trying to make sure everything that we have in our home and our hands are staying nice and clean. So this is a good way for everybody to learn how those detergents are working and making all of the dirt and the oil disappear. So you guys are welcome to do this experiment as many times as you would like. Remember you can always take a picture or you can use a piece of paper to set down on here and collect your art. Just let it air dry and you'll be able to have that lovely swirled art milk picture that you have. If you have any questions for us at all, you can always call us here at Wildlife Prairie Park, or you can send us an email at programming at wildlifeprairie.org. Thank you again so much for joining us today, and I hope you had a lot of fun.